But I'm joined now by my guest, who is a public affairs analyst in the person of Dr. Femi Ekpebinu. Thank you, Doctor, for coming on the program this morning. Thank you very much, Amaka. It's an honor to be here. It's always a pleasure having mm -hmm. you on the program. But I really want to get your reaction, first and foremost, before we even go to, you know, other areas regarding human capital development. You have, you know, heard or read about the accession of a vice president, that is uh, uh, Kashim Shatima, where he did talk about, you know, increasing Nigeria's uh, position in the human capital index, uh, global human capital development index, uh, between 1 and 80. And there are, you know, there has been different reactions by Nigerians. Some would say that 80 already is not the best position to have Nigeria on. But let's hear from you, you know, regarding this promise. Like one of our commenters said, you know, it's not enough to make those promises, but to put in the work to ensure that we start to see the results of, you know, these accessions. But what are your thoughts on this accession by the president? Yeah, okay. It's, it's an initiative of government. Um, it's, a, it's a right uh, decision. We, we cannot question it. We can't despise it. Uh, so we expect that um, the committee of government that's going to take position on that should sit down and give us an idea of how they want to achieve this. Mm. Uh, Nigeria, we are not for uh, policy formulation. Uh, we don't have issues around policy formulation, uh, but to implement these policies and to see the nation, you know, flow around the policies is always our challenge. So now we have seen this from the vice president. We have received it. We have heard it. We want to see how they will want to move on with this. Mm. So to begin, is 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 a positive initiative. Is a positive initiative and is a positive information but we are hoping as we have always you know done to see that government will be able to do the right thing to put the right structures in place to drive this policy uh, one thing is to formulate policies like this another thing is to drive it and it becomes part of us as a nation mm. so we are waiting we are waiting we are really watching well said. But, but you also did make a very valid point. You said uh, Nigeria doesn't have a problem of policy and policy formulation. In fact, we have wonderful policy documents, but the challenge that we have had over the years is the implementation. So I'd like for you to speak regarding that, how that can change. And also, I'd like for you to speak where we currently are, you know, or paint a picture regarding where we currently are, or how far away are we from achieving these targets by the federal government? Okay, the federal government has given us this picture now. Uh, as I said, we, we really don't have problem with uh, policy formulation. We, we have enough. In every sector of the economy, we have basic things that have been defined, laid down, rethink, some published. You know, even the whole world, they are aware of some of those things. But the challenge with us is to implement some of these policies, to see these policies becoming part of our economy, becoming part of our development, becoming part of us as a people, as Nigerians. So this one now that the federal government has just brought to bear as, as, as a drive to, to move uh, the Human Capital Development Index of Nigeria from where it is to be among the best 80 in the world. Mm. Well, I, I called the vice president. He said it's, it's an ambition. It's, it's, it's a positive ambition. But there are a lot that must be put into it mm. to be able to achieve this. Mm. So we want to begin to watch for signs. We want to begin to wait. We are waiting for signs. Mm. We, we are waiting and hoping for signs to see how government would drive this through all of the committee that they might have set up and you know the agency of government, the MDAs, all the stakeholders, policy makers, policy implementators, implementers, and all the people involved. We want to see how do we drive this? Mm. Beginning from this moment, uh, mm. this, this information came up on Friday, I think. So, beginning from this week, we want to see, we want to begin to see what government will do concerning mm. this. Mm. And one thing that is very key to driving this is data. Mm. 
Mm. We want to see the position of government concerning data to drive uh, this development into becoming uh, uh, one of the leading 80 nations mm. in the world mm. as far as human capital development index is concerned. Mm. Just like my guest, Dr. Femi, has said, we want to see. So we are looking out to see, you know, changes, data-driven changes. There's still so much more to come up on the program. The conversation continues after the break. Just stay. Thank you so much for still staying with us on the program. You are still watching Business Daily coming to you live on Trust TV. The Nigerian people are said to be one of Nigeria's biggest assets, very resilient, very hardworking, very intentional. Vice President uh, uh, Kashim Shatima said on Friday that Nigeria, or that the federal government, is determined to position Nigeria among the top 80 countries on the Global Human Capital Index. And this uh, index, according to him, Nigeria is expected to, or he hopes and believes that he uh, works towards positioning Nigeria on the top 80 list moving forward. So today we will be discussing uh, how to drive that growth, speaking about human capital development and the nexus between human capital development and economic growth. I still have my guest right here with me, who is a public affairs analyst in the person of Dr. Femi Ekbebinu. Thank you again, Thank Doctor, you. for yeah. uh, coming on the program yeah. today. Thank you. Uh, before the break, you had already started, you know, talking with so much passion. This is one area you're very passionate about. Yeah. You know, you already started talking as to how much we are, you know, watching and looking out to see changes, really. And I would like for you to be more specific at this point, you know, what, what you want to see from government, what the government's role is, you know, to ensure that this is indeed prioritized. Are there specific strategy or specific policy directions that you are recommending? Oh, okay, so human capital index. Now, human capital development, human capital index. The index currently, globally, Nigeria is, um, I think, the 168th country? Mm, about that, 168 like or 172. Now, now, so the vice president said that he wants a situation where the country will be among the best 80. Top 80. Yeah. So why 80 is the decision of government. I wouldn't know the parameter they use to take that decision on 80. Now, and then we know globally that there are indicators that drives this thing. Mm. It's, not just, it's not just a desire. There are intentional indicators. There are indicators that government will focus on to driving human capital development. Mm. Uh, you know, the, the, the vice president has mentioned those indicators, the key leading ones, you know, education, health, and um, skill development. So the question we now begin to ask is, where is the position of Nigeria in these three indicators, in these three, you know, indices of, you know, human capital development index? So that's the question we want to begin to ask. And my, my, my expectation from government, before I begin to lay down my, my, my recommendation or like strategy, my expectation from government is that government, uh, you know, should be able to give us the position of the nation currently, right? Now, the, the projection is that the vice president said that they want to achieve this between now and year 2030. 2030 is about less than six years from from now. Mm. So what is the projection of government in achieving this per year? That's the first thing we want to see. Mm. So the government should be able to tell us through all their you know, you know, agencies that are in charge of this, there's a committee on this, if I if I you know, according to the vice president, what what are they going to give us as Nigerians in twenty twenty six? What are they going to give us in 2027? That's shorter goals, breaking down. And, and spreading into the six years. Hmm. Now, what is the position of the head system, the head sector of Nigeria currently? COVID-19 came. In 2020, the head sector, the state of the head sector, the state of the, you know, Nigeria in health opened up. And we were able to see our position. We knew that 
we have a long way to go. What has happened between 2020 and now? What will happen between now and maybe in another one year, in another three years, and in six years? So we expect that government should be able to give us all of those things driven by data. Driven by data. Same in education. Mm -hmm. Government should be able to give us you know, their projections driven by data. For instance, what is the position of government concerning out-of-school children, for instance? You know, the current out-of-school children, there are millions in Nigeria, spread across the state, especially in the northern part of the nation. So what is government going to be doing to reduce this number? What is the place of government agencies, you know, in harnessing all of these capital in humans in Nigerian children mm. across board. Mm. So we want to see all of that. But for me, as, as a, a, an element of recommendation, I desire a situation where Nigeria will be able to focus seriously on building, changing the last cape of education in this country. We have a long way to go. Look at the budget of the country as far as education is concerned, less than 10%. Mm. Vis-a-vis -vis the position of UNICEF, 26%, where are we going to? But, but, but you, wait, okay. uh, permit me to, to interject at this point. You said that the current education system is nothing to write home it's about. It's less than 10%. It's too far away from the global benchmark. Is it, is it, we, a, case, we, is it a case of poor budgetary allocation or, or a case of maybe... Uh, that system being too rigid, you know, to compare with what's obtainable in other in, in other classes. Which system? Educational system? Yes. Is no, it no, too no. rigid, it, it's, or is it's it a, a case it's of about poor... us? It's mm. about the leadership. It's about what drives the leaders of the country. It's about where their passion lies. It is about their mindset. It is about their interest. Where exactly do they want to put the resource of the nation to lead in Nigeria? That's, that's just, it's not rocket science. Mm. What they do in other parts of the nation, they are, they are being driven by humans. It takes humans to drive systems, you know, anchored by the leadership of the nation. So it is the interest of our leaders, the, the president, the vice president, all our political leaders, people in strategic places that drive policies, that formulate policies to say, okay, we want to move the budgetary allocation that we put in education to so 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 percentage so that even if we are not there yet we have a progression we should have a progression so when government does that the following year there's a progression in another year there's a progression nigerians will begin to have trust element of trust but for now we are not there there are people who have made you know careless statements such as the nigerian graduate is not employable and you know, uh, you find out that when these people leave Nigeria and maybe go abroad, you, you see them start to compete with you know people who went to uh, schools that are better ranked, you know, when it comes to education. But, but let's hear from you first. You, I would like for you to react to you, you know that statement. Yeah. But then I'd like for us to also speak regarding specific areas that need reform in the Nigerian educational system. The the the. The, the statement of Nigerians are not employed. Nigerian graduates. Yeah, not Nigerian employed. graduates. I, I, I don't really flow with that statement. Mm. Why? Because when you take our graduates outside of this country, they do it. So the problem is not actually about the students or the, 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 yeah, the students on campus in our university system. The problem is about the system. It's about the system. The way we handle our curriculum, what we do in the university system, in our polytechnic education, in our colleges of education, vis-a-vis -vis what the students are going to be meeting post-graduation. That's where the matter lies. So we now connect that to your second question. Now, what government, what, do they, what are they supposed to do? They are now supposed to look into the curriculum vis-a-vis -vis what is obtainable globally and what our students are going to be exposed to outside, I mean, post-graduation. So, a student who is studying computer science, for instance, you go into the university, you study computer science for four years, in some universities, five years, and you don't have a computer lab, for instance. Hmm. How are you going to... Why would they say you are not employed? Hmm. So, the challenge, basically, is not actually the, the student. It's not actually the Nigerian. Hmm. 
it is the system so government we can put a whole lot of effort the, see government needs to be we need to be strategic enough mm. in the way we respond to the educational system we are we are not where we are supposed to be we need to be strategic we need to be progressive we we want our leaders to 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 convince us by telling us that this and this and this are the things we want to put into educational system so that we'll be able to attain this part time driven by data when we see all that people will begin to have some element of trust mm. to our leaders. Mm. But for now, we are not seeing those things. Nigerians, we, are, we, we have the capacity is there to drive human development. You know, look at us across the globe. Any sector of the economy, anywhere in the world, you will see Nigerians there. Education, health. The best set of doctors across the globe, they are Nigerians. Go to the U.S., Go to the UK, go to Australia. In UAE, yeah, the highest percentage of leading expatriates are Nigerians. So what happened to them? That they are doing well in those nations. It is because the systems of those nations, you know, permits, you know, progression. It gives, it enhances creativity, it enhances innovation, it enhances development. You know, the environment gives room for, you know, people to, to, to showcase their capacity. And, you know, they are happy you know, the development, mm. the, the, the human capital development of those nations. Uh, doctor, when you were talking about the indices, you know, to use in measuring yeah. HDI, that is human capital, the human capital index, you yeah. talked about education, you health. talked about health, you skills. talked about skills acquisition. Yeah. But let us now, you know, just touch briefly on health. You you'd made mention of the COVID-19 pandemic, which will literally expose nations to the current state yeah. of their health yeah. systems, yeah. Nigeria yeah. inclusive. Yeah. We saw firsthand where we currently stand regarding our health uh, sector. So I would like for you to speak regarding that, even though you painted a picture that doesn't look so good regarding our health uh, sector. So is, is that a bottleneck towards us attaining, you know, that growth in human capital uh, development? In attaining that goal, that projection of government, those three things, especially the two, as emphasized by the Vice President, health and education, emphasis must be put into that. We want government to tell us what in specific they want to do in the health sector. The, the, you know, the tertiary health, you know, health, the primary and all the dimensions of health. What exactly do they want to do to, you know, to, 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 to be able to reduce the health challenge? across the state, especially in northern part of the nation, you know, to re respond to, you know, maternal mortality and all of those things that have to, that are indicators to measuring, you know, the, the status of nation as far as health development is concerned. So what we need from government, what we want to see or what we advise or what we recommend for government is for government to be able to progressively give us data. Data drives economic development. You know, to be able to tell us so, so, so number of these are the things that happen in this part of the nation, you know, and we have been able to increase to this or we have been able to reduce the poverty level to this. These are the things we want to be seeing, you know, as far as the development that we are yearning towards is concerned. And we are expectant. Nigerians are expectant. We have the way with that in terms of, you know, the human capital. You know, it we is do. for it is for the policy of government to drive these things. It is for the policy of government to drive these things. And how do we know? We will know through, you know, you know, leadership by example. We we, we will know through leadership by example. Pick the two key sectors: education, health. We will know through leadership by example. How do I mean? The, the leadership, the, 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 our political leadership and, you know, the, 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 the key policy makers, the key stakeholders, the elite of this nation should be able to have confidence in our health system. They should be able to walk into our health facilities and receive medical care mm. rather than traveling abroad. For health tourism. Yeah. So where, where are the hospitals in Nigeria? 
We want to know. We want a situation where the president, for instance, or the vice president, for instance, or the senior president, for instance, or the minister of health, for instance, walk into a particular health facility in this country and Nigerians are aware that so 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 person got attention from this health facility. That's leadership by example. We saw an example like that during the last administration when the vice president, Professor Yemi Ushibadjo, you know, had to on that, you know, uh, went through a particular surgery in a medical facility in Lagos. Those are the things we want to see. We want to see those things, seriously speaking. When we don't have those things, we will not have faith, we will not have any trust in our health system. Mm. So leadership by example is key. Mm. Yeah. Let us now touch on skills acquisition. Even yeah. though I believe that out of those three indices, that is one that Nigerians are pretty much flourishing in, at least yeah. to an extent. Yeah. You know, seeing how far the world has come in terms of the world being a global village with so much knowledge very accessible at this point. Mm -hmm. Nigerians now, you know, go out of their ways to learn and train themselves. Yeah. But I'd like for you to speak regarding that, you know, uh, away from formal training to personal training or informal trainings. Where do we currently stand? Okay, are we, are we try to connect that with the educational system in the country too? Um, the place of skill is very important and is very, very key. Uh, one key, one key uh, development globally that drives key is the place of IT, digital technology, digital innovation. And I said earlier that Nigerians, we have, because of our population, we have over 200 million. Because of that population, the population itself is an asset, it's an advantage for us to driving you know, skill development. So what we just need or what we just expect or what we desire is that we, we, we expect a situation where, you know, we see policy in place from government that deliberately drives these things intentionally. We can drive them through our universities. We can drive them through, you know, our, you know, you know educational facility. For instance, look at the post education in Nigeria. I expect a situation where the, the original mandate, the original reason why we have polytechnic education is being met to developing technology, de you, know, you know, creativity, innovation. So government can focus on you know, the, the, the polytechnic or, mm. or the technical schools, which most times we don't even have some of them doing well you know, at the moment. We can focus into those places so that we drive skill among the younger generation. The higher percentage of Nigerian population is among the younger ones. Mm. So we can drive those things by intentional policy development around our school system, you know, in a situation where you have somebody on campus in a polytechnic coming out from, even if it is national diploma, you come out and you are coming out, you know, self develop by the time you are leaving your you know deep, you know first two years in polytechnic you are coming up not to look for a job in the public sector but to be able to do something on your own we must be intentional about those things after the first two years you know your your end your your I, one year it your higher national diploma by the time you are leaving you are coming out as a full-blown entrepreneur we must inculcate those things into our curriculum the entrepreneurship curriculum in our schools must be out of theory. Where lecturers like us, we just go to class and we teach, and there's no practical illustration or practical application of those things. So we can turn around the educational system, especially in those in those uh, protecting education, to affecting skill development in the nation. Mm. We have we have a lot to do in that sector because we have the people. We have the people across board. Now, outside the, the protecting education, the government, Nigeria can drive this same skill development initiative, you know, in another area which, you know, research has been able to identify, which is the, you know, the entrepreneurship development in the eastern part of this country, the, the Igbo entrepreneurship development. The boy-boy um, settlement. If, if government can understand how that alone can drive skill development and entrepreneurial development in this mm. country, then we'll be somewhere ahead of us. Mm. If, if we can invest what is needed in terms of resources, 
policy attention, not just you know being political about it, but because we want to be intentional to bring the nation into a particular level. The Ibu entrepreneurship development scheme, that idea of you know having somebody to be trained, you know, and most of them don't even have the formal education. But when we invest, you know, the right policy into that intentionally, then the country will hit, you know, somewhere positive. Mm. In, in, the, in fact, if we do that, the, the country will be running in the same parameter like countries like China mm. and you, India. You know, you said something very interesting. Mm. You said, you talked about how, you know, Nigerians are contributing, you know, outside of Nigeria and yeah. the growth that they are making in these other nations yeah. and, you know, contributing to the overall GDP in terms of uh, human capital yeah. index. Yeah. But i also like for you to speak, especially for, to the, for the benefit of our viewers who are wondering, you know, the link between human capital development and economic growth. Explain as though you're explaining to a five-year-old, you know, uh, what, that, what that really does mean. Okay, I would, I would not explain as an economist. I'm not an ex mm, economist. Mm. I will explain, uh, you know, in, in simple terms. Exactly. Now, we, we have seen that human... Now, the, 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 the foundation or the primary description is this. When a nation does not, you know, uh, you know get the needed capital, all right, from her citizen, from the time the citizen is born till age 18, then you are losing. So the place of human capital index is when you are tapping into the capital of your citizens in those in that those space of time between age zero and 18 to investing to developing the economy of the nation, then you are tapping into the resource base of the nation. Now, but when you don't do it, you are losing. So, we have seen empirically that human capital development enhances economic growth in the nation. We have seen it's been proven empirically. So, it's just for us as a nation to, you know, you know, you know peek into all those empirical researches that have been done. We have enough. Mm -hmm. Nigerians, we have scholars in this nation that have done, you know, a lot around that to see the nexus between um, human capital development, human capital development mm -hmm. and you know, economic growth in the nation. Mm -hmm. They are existing. It's just for us to pick those things and practically invest into them to achieving what we're supposed to achieve by mm -hmm. time. Now, we, we achieving, being in, being among the first 80 nations, it's not going to be the word of mouth. It's, it's hard work. And the hard work must be shown to us by the leadership. Mm -hmm. It's hard work. It's not, it's not going to be luck. Because those nations that are there, for instance, nations like Singapore and some of these nations that are leading in human capital index globally, they didn't get to those places by luck. It is not even by prayer. It is not by wish. It is by deliberate action. Deliberate action driven by policy, driven by data, and, you know, thank God for technology driven by technology development. Mm. Uh, those are the things. That's the comment I could make. In that <laughs> yeah. Indeed. I mean, yeah. it's not driven by just, you know, mere no, no, talk. No, 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 it's no. not a walk in the park. No, no, no. We have to see, you know, policy driven changes or action, data driven changes, like Singapore, you mentioned, Lee yeah. Kuan Yew, and, you know, all the work that he did put into uh, growing. We, we, we should uh, not mention those people. You know, mm. we, we always. We have all of these things. We mm. know that Lee Kuan Yew did some things in Singapore. Mm. Singapore was behind us at the time. Malaysia was behind us at the time. We, we kept seeing those things. Mm. We grew into, you know, hearing our leader say that, but let's get there. Mm. We ourselves. Let's get, let's there, get there too. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Femi Ekbebinu, who is a public affairs analyst, speaking very, very passionately as to how we can drive Nigeria's human capital development and how that will, you know, in the long run also drive economic growth. Thank you, Dr. Femi. Always a, a pleasure thank, having you. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very month, much. Yeah. And that's the much that we will be taking today on Business Daily. But keep the conversation going across all our social media platforms on Facebook, on YouTube, on X, and of course on Instagram. We'll be there to interact with you. Just keep the conversation going. Let us hear your thoughts on how uh, we can, you know, achieve this target and of course uh, how the, the nexus, you know, really will impact on Nigeria's economic growth. My name is Chiamakai Nendu. Thank you for watching and bye for now.